gentlemen, welcome back to the Seed Story Cup number three here. I'm Eric Cox and joining me is Ignite here and we are just about to cast Ecop versus Masan. I am <laughs> you guys. I'm very excited about that match. We had an absolute cracker before. I heard just Frodo was yeah. telling me we had Life Coach versus Maverick in such a sick is sick match and yeah. I'm very looking forward to see some more Halfstone because I'm really hot right now here to see <laughs> to see some Pretty hot in this room, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the also hard. Rope the coach got roped. Yeah, life coach got roped. That's what I heard, and he got punished for roping yeah. because he took too much time and missed a turn. Go. And Ecop is asking if they are good to go, and it looks like we are just about to jump into the first game of the match. And I can already talk about the classes. Ecop had a druid, hunter, a rogue, and a mage. The mage got banned by Masan, and Masan, on the other hand, has a druid. Paladin, Mage, and the Warrior got banned. Mm -hmm. So we are going up Druid, Hunter, Rogue against Druid, Paladin, Mage. What do you think about the Warrior ban? Uh, Nikop only has uh, the Druid that seems favored versus Warrior. The Hunter and Rogue can be in favor. Well, or it depends on the Hunter. If you have a face Hunter... But th does this indicate that Ecop has a mech mage? I must since protect the wild. No, he banned Warrior. So he has yeah, a I would, ban the, I would ban the, more, the Warrior if, if I had... With with rogue and face hunter in your lineup, oh, I think and this is freeze mage for me. Cup. That's why I banned warrior. And a freeze mage as well. Yeah, I would definitely ban a warrior there. And also, sometimes people do not really feel confident going up against a warrior. I also have those matchups. Like if there's a warrior in the lineup, I really like to ban the warrior. Yeah, because I did win freeze versus warrior today. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Come on, but you had the <laughs> sick game winning freeze mage legendary. versus warrior. But anyway, True. we start out here with Masan. Uh, sure. Any inner weight into shade of next round, so he has to white grow follow up yeah. if he wants to. But against a hunter, probably we might also see a rough. Yeah, yeah. But it's with one of those occasions though where the druid can actually race the hunter. It's yeah. Nice. Well, there's not going to be a wrath into this, obviously, since it's stealthed. So growth is going to come off, and that's really strong for, for the druid side. The ancient lore is building up already. If he gets a second inbreed, that's going to be huge. Yeah, because that's the thing I was uh, wondering about if he can draw into some card draw, because he was running out yeah, of, of cards, Once and that ancient of lore is very crucial here. Because. Innervate and Wild Growth don't give you cards back, so that's two cards he used up. Exactly. And he runs out of options eventually. Ecop, on the other hand, decides to go for the Random Huffer Animal Companion. Random Huffer. Yeah, it's always <laughs> Huffer, isn't it? Yeah. One thing to note is that Companion is so good versus Druid. It's the best tempo card that a uh, face hunter can get in the matchup. I totally agree. Companion. What do you think about unveiling the shade here? Already go for for the race, because you were talking about There's the race no so much. To keep it. Like, why not just go for it? You're forcing your opponent to spend the mana to kill it rather than play as well. I would think so too, and Masan does the, uh, just that. Ecop draws into the quiz shot here. Mm -hmm. And he was not really going to fit though. He could fit the abuse with Worgen in this turn since it's turn 3 and hero power, but I don't know, I think he wants to bow and build up the charges with his traps. Since he got a pretty bad start with two explosive traps in his open. And there we go, Ecop this is huge for just played Masan. the Eaglehorn bow. And Masan has a very nice board and it came to the point that you were talking about, it's now a race. And yeah. the druid is... And the druid race is better. Here. Yes, totally. Because the minions are bigger, they are more st stickier on the board, harder to remove. The face hunter doesn't really want to remove them, remove them or have removal for them, so... Exactly, and as we see with two explosive traps, well, mm -hmm. the Eagle Horn bow equipped here, there's no easy way for, for Ecop here to trade the board away. Yeah, for and sure. it's looking really good here for Masan. If he, maybe, you can also, as a druid, always draw into the combo to close mm -hmm. the game out. He's had to play every single turn, so he curved out really well. Even if it didn't fit the mana, like, he got a, a shred on five mana. That's not, not ideal, but yeah. it was actually really good, considering. And now he's got Thoris into a lower. It's I totally agree. It's looking very good here for Masan. He already rocked the party at poker, <laughs> then lost yeah. it all again, but <laughs> it's, it's looking really good here. What could Ecop do this turn? Because it's looking really awkward here. That shade is a 5-5 five five now, and the more it grows, mm -hmm. uh, the harder it's going it to be to yeah. deal with that. But you can't deal with it, unless you had an owl. You could go for a quick shot and set up that explosive trap. That doesn't kill it. Uh, unless you bow it? Oh yeah, sure. Whoa. You have to bow it here. 
playing the knife juggler. That's not a winning play, that's a play to survive, and you can't really survive in this environment right now. Yeah, Ikop knows that he's pretty far behind now, so... But he has to go all in, I guess. You just lose the matchup. There's nothing you can do, think about it. I guess you're right, but at least you tried. <laughs> <laughs> to try to what, stay alive? Like yeah, try to stay alive. Maybe there's something in your deck that you didn't <laughs> didn't know that there is. No, I'm just joking. He's but too short for lethal already. He probably trades into Thorson with that juggler since he's been trading already. Yeah, probably. He has to. He has to if he wants to survive, but if he wants to win, he needs to go face. Yep. The lore... Kills his There's dreams, a combo. But what can you draw plan. next turn for the face hunter here? What can you draw to to win the game, like that? Because now you leave a Thorison on the board, everything gets cheaper. So we will just see maybe at some point a heal and a taunt in one turn. Mm. This turn he can easily go for roughing that and heal up with the ancient of lore. Yeah. If he feels like doing that, I would do so because you you do not need any more cards. Yeah, You're pretty safe in the, nothing else. in the game here. There's no 16 damage possibility either, especially on turn six. No, and the haunted creeper is not even adding damage to that. Yeah. We could at least we could see the quick shot being played last and draw a card. Actually, it's the first time for me seeing that. Take out Thorson here. What do you think about quick shot as a card overall? Do you think it's reliable? Yeah, it's okay. I don't think... Do you I, think it's think mandatory? I think it's overhyped. Overhyped. But do you think it's mandatory or not when playing Face Hunter? Not in Face Hunter. Because the point is, when you're playing Face Hunter, usually when you're out of cards, your opponent should be close to death. Okay. And How does that not help you, though, if you top take a quick shot? Well, if you top take a quick shot in the late game... Obviously, that's the best case scenario, but... Yeah, it is, I but in my opinion, it, the face hunter puts on so much early aggression, that's where the face hunter is strong. And then when you're running out of cards, you either won the game or you lost it, and drawing into another card sometimes does not really help you. Well, there are some cases where you can make... Uh, Quick shot into commands and stuff like that. Quick shot into kill command or something like Leroy that, or quickshot even. into quickshot into... <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, that's a number guy play, but... Jumbo. Well, but I think it's it's... Well, because you ha also have to take one card out of the face hunter, you have to make a slot free for that. Well, yeah. But, well, the basis of face hunter is pretty much like 26 cards, maybe 28. There's always some wiggle room where you can make your own choices, but... Uh, but we saw Massa sure. closing this out. Ikop tried to survive. Yeah. He was unable to survive in the end because Masan just played his Druid of the Claw in cat form. And this means a 1-0 here mm -hmm. for Masan in a very nice game against the face hunter very here. Very nice start for him, yeah. And I guess we are just jumping into the next game as soon as the players are ready. And that means Masan can't use his Druid for the remainder of the match, but he has the Paladin and the Mage still left. Yeah. So, do you think he feels confident about... Why would you Mage? Because there's a Rogue, there's a Hunter and a, uh, and a Druid. And what Mage do you think it is? You're implying it's a Mech Mage then? I guess it's a Mech Mage. I guess it's if it a is a Mech Mage, mage it's obviously a very good bet. But uh, at the same time, what if you went Mech Mage into Druid and lost? Well, you're, yeah, you're not whoa. supposed to anyway. <laughs> well, I'm trying to theorycraft how we would lose because then the Paladin would be locked down. Could he get through Yod on his Paladin maybe? Because Face Hunter, Rogue are pretty good versus Paladin, and Druid is like whoever gets the best curve, I guess. But I would rather be pinned down to the Paladin because it has a chance against the Rogue and the Druid and the Hunter. It has a decent matchup against everything of those, even though he's not favorite. I think you should aim for Paladin versus Druid matchup. That's yeah, the best way you got to clear your I guess the chances paladin. now are pretty low because if you, now, if you lose now with your Mage mm -hmm. and there's just a Druid and Rogue left for the Paladin, you get like better mind game. It's Yeah, you're, I guess you're right. And yeah, Masan goes for the mage and runs into Ikop's hunter once more. And it's a mech mage. It is, yeah. And what a nice start here for, <laughs> for Masan. Kept he everything. has three one drops, he kept them. Or Explosive well. trap is pretty deadly though, and there is one. Depends on how much we see him overextend. Yeah, then we see it. It's pretty greedy to just go double cock master and hit for six on turn two. Well, let's see if Masan is greedy or not. Nah, he only played one He's of them. He's playing it safe. <laughs> All um, right, that's that's very good here. Just hero power, I suppose. That's a nice card. Yeah, I like, I like the running that. Deckhand. Yeah, for sure. 
It's very cool, also in the combination with Glaivezuka. Yeah, well, if you run four weapons, you should run South Sea Deck, in my opinion. Hiccup just goes for the steady shot here, does not even try to contest the Cogmaster. Yeah, he plays an Oytron first. He doesn't want to get the ones on. So yeah, he's playing, he's trying not to overcommit to explosive And that Oytron, honestly, was a pretty good draw here. Yeah, it, it stops him from overextending, probably, because he wants to keep the coin for Blast Mage, just in case. Exactly. So I think we uh, see a Now Icop has to waste three damage on that Divine Shield, and that doesn't feel good for a Face Hunter here. Mm -hmm. uh, probably we might just see the Spider Tank. Yeah, just dodging the Explosive Trap. And Masan is playing that very safely here. In the end, that explosive trap might come down this turn in combination with the steady shot, I guess. Yep. That's the play. You don't want him to trade. Then he got a scientist leopard gnome hero part turn as well. Is he blast major Lofa? I think Lofa is pretty decent here. You're pushing, pushing so much damage already. It should be 19 now. If you hit the Lothab, he's going to take another 8 next turn. So he'd go down to 11. But he decides to go to stay mage. on curve and to yeah. keep the coin. He plays the Goblin Blast Mage, also adds some more damage to yeah, the face. I suppose he wants to go Blast Mage into Lothab, which is yeah. even stronger, per perhaps. Yeah, if you get it through. Yeah. If you're not punished for that. But uh, as it looks, uh, Ecop can just play Mad Scientist, maybe Lepronome as you... Or, well, a South Sea Deckhand would make sense if he wants to trade that Spider Tank away. It would be better if you had the second explosive, so you could train into Blast Mage. That mm. I'd agree with, otherwise... Every defensive play as a face hunter is a losing play, that's... What I know. What I feel like, at least. You, I really like that. Ecop plays the face hunter here twice, everybody hates face hunter. And it looks like he will lose two games consecutively <laughs> with the face hunter. That does not happen too that's often. That's justice, right? <laughs> yeah, that's that's justice. Ecop gets punished for playing face hunter. <laughs> Anyway, he's taking his time about that turn because, well, it's it's a crucial turn in that game because it might decide if he survives or if he goes down. He also goes for more board presence. He values the Lepronome more than his hero ability. Swings to the face. And does he even go to the face with the South Sea deckhand? No, he no, trades the Spider Tank away. He takes the mech off the board. And there's a Pyroblast in the mech mage. Mm. Interesting. That's really interesting. We I have heard seen Firebat was playing Ragnaros. Was he? Yeah, Ragnaros. Uh, I yeah, guess Sixo was talking about it last night. I guess it's 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 yeah. filling the same slot because you're dealing more damage in the late game. It's something to close the game out. Yeah, we saw um, we saw Amaz play Mac Mage, I believe, and Sixo was like, um, I told Amaz to play Ragnaros over Sky Golem. Mm. I suppose Firebat took that advice and uh, agreed with it. But yeah, uh, but Masan here very interesting with the Pyroblast because that's secure. 10 damage to the face. Yeah, I also heard Strife could talk a long time. I think it was Strife Girl on stream or something, just testing out Pyroblast and Mech Mage. Mm. Because in the very late game, they're going to be below 10 probably. And you're going to be at a high low, uh, health total. And you want to draw your burn. And one Fireball is not enough, but maybe Pyroblast is. Yeah. So it's an interesting choice, but it makes sense to a point here. Ecop, on the other hand, now his turn again. Uh, he has to think about how he can survive. You could maybe run your weapon into Lothab and my mad scientist into well, you would be face tanking. There's no point in face tanking yeah. because you're still doing the damage. He's down to ten life already. So how oh can he? God. He has a second explosive. How does he take advantage of that? Considering the scientist. You could trade your scientist into no. that and maybe an arcane golem into Lothab. No, you can't trade anymore. You gotta, you gotta stop ten, the blast mage and win next turn, I believe. So attack face with arcane golem. Oh, he traded, I believe. Well, we will see. And mm, yes. Such a defensive play. He did the play I suggested, but I have to agree to you. Actually, you are right, because like that, you're not winning the game. You're yeah. just surviving, you and there's no the point in surviving. Period. Sure, he's not, he's not taking any damage, and Frostball will not be enough to any torture. Masan, on the other hand, do you expect him to go for the Frostball? Well, now oh. we see it, as yeah. I'm... As I'm asking for that, but now Frostbolt into Mero Entity and Cogmaster with with Clockwork Gnome seems to be a pretty nice play. Considering here. the Frostbolt top deck, if he had Arcane Golem into the face, the bow would be frozen anyway. He probably wouldn't get a lethal this turn, so yeah. I guess it was correct to be defensive there. But he needs to race the Pyroblast. And looking pretty rough. 
has five on board, six with a ping. He can't. He can can he stop even go damage. unleash the hounds here? Yeah, he can stop two damage only. Well, Sounds at least that's nice. Because he's gonna leave it alive, so he doesn't care about the spare part. Yeah. Well, like that, the pyroblast comes a bit too late. It looks. <clears throat> And yeah, playing defensively actually pays off here for Ecop. Mm -hmm. Staying in the game a little bit longer. Well, he needs to win next turn, otherwise. Yeah, the mage has to draw fireball. Oh shit! There it is. <laughs> fireball is drawn for Massa, and very lucky here. No baby rage incoming. Yeah, well, that's a two zero for Massa. That's pretty strong start. Wow. Damn. Tight man. series though. Played and well around explosive trap. Ecop had to play really defensively. Masan in the end, lucky, going up 2-0 now against Ecop, yep. being punished for playing face hunter here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I really like that. And yeah, we are just about to see. Well, Masan now is down to his paladin, so not much for him to think about here. Mm -hmm. And I think he has nice chances. You can just queue hunter again because if the, the yeah, hunter doesn't win anyway, you, you're not gonna win the series. Yeah, some people like to set up momentum to pick the best matchup first. Like I this do time. that. The, the rogue. I hate randomizing. I don't think it's. I don't think it's correct. I think there's some logic behind it, and you should try to find the best logic within you. And obviously, it doesn't matter when you're down to two zero because they only have one deck anyway. You got to beat it three times. No, the thing. The thing about momentum is if if Ecop manages to win now with the rogue, what's very likely against the mm -hmm. paladin because yeah. it's favorable against paladin, and with the druid, or, well, maybe. Even with the hunter, then setting up momentum, maybe it gets to the two-two, and Masan gets nervous. It's that's kind of mind game, you know. When Masan gets nervous stress. because it's two-two, and if you don't misplay because of that, which you shouldn't, uh, you should be on the same track. I don't know. But Ecom is setting up his chances here. He picks the rogue. I really like that choice because, mm -hmm. well, actually the series takes longer if mm -hmm. Masan doesn't manage to close it out here. But he has the anti kill. But if he keeps that. Uh, well, I wouldn't keep it on that starting hand, but as we see, it's in the deck, so he can't last out that damage by by the rogue. So he did not keep heal by that. Okay, ooh, that's pretty heavy. Wow, that's pretty bad actually. Well, he kept loaded the rogue as you can see as well. He got the favorite matchup, but uh, yeah, and Paladin's turn is really slow. So uh, that was a nice bug here. Both players draw simultaneously. <laughs> Yeah, they passed turn too fast, I guess. Anyway, do we see a juggler come down? I think so. There was no coin. Yeah. He sets up for Messer. It's good damage, but uh, easily countered as well. Exactly. Wow, and there we see... The poison. That's a very good top deck. Yeah. Fits the three mana. And he got preps for next turn. Into Azure Drake. That, that feels really strong because you might draw backstab. So you're going to use it on five with your Azure Drake. Some very strong turns ahead. Like if a Shredder comes down, and even next turn you're feeling pretty good. Yeah, you could even draw easily. You could draw into into fan of knives to maybe take out the master for a battle. Easily, two and how many? <laughs> you could easily draw into it with preparation. Into and do that in turn five, you mean? Yeah, turn five oh, yeah. then, because okay. it's still early enough. Well, okay, it's not early point. enough, but Flurry deals with yeah, it. Yeah, anyway. Flurry also. So, so here he we go. The salt sea deck end, which many people have been cutting, depending on the meta. I still played. You do? Yeah. You think of, I like it because Mac Mage and Face Hunter. It's some additional burst. It's really good versus secrets, definitely. I prefer it over Kazan, it's much less costly. Yeah. And it's more versatile as but well. But there we go, double backstab here. Yep. Uh, Azure Drag and Lothup, so a lot of he has eight five drops. In that. Yeah. At least he get drop. Does he drop EGH? Mm. I don't think he does. He makes another one. Another dude, right? So you got four dudes on board. Got a 3 1 weapon. There's no blade flurry. There's no fan of knives. What's the rogue gonna do about this? We see that the paladin didn't coin out quartermaster, so Ecop probably knows that there's no quartermaster right now. Yeah. We still wanna clear those tokens. They're pretty annoying. He doesn't have a, the second preparation either, so even if he top takes fan of knives, it's not enough. At least this turn. That's a very full hand though for the rogue, so yeah. a lot of options. On the other hand, now... Doesn't have that many options. You got the fives, the fours here, the tinkers. Yeah. It's pretty stuck, actually. Okay, it. it's you're, a clunky you're right, yeah. It's a lot of cards, but not many options. Yeah. You're right. And, yeah. 
I was just telling the team to add the, the stream title because it was still oh, saying Firebat, Firebat against <laughs> Faramir. So thank it's you to the, to the chat as well because somebody mentioned it. <laughs> and we changed it now. Oh, wow. <laughs> Turn 5 Quartermaster. <laughs> Craziness incoming here. 12 damage. Wow. And we don't even have... Well, we do have a double backstab so you can deal with two of them if you play the is there second Azure Drake. Yeah, there is one. I don't know, that feels pretty costly. You need the flurry. Like, yeah, you need the flurry here. You need the flurry. Oh, man. That's not the flurry! Yeah. I guess you need to Azure then. Azure yeah. Azure double star. You have to. Feels so wrong though. Wow, Ecop is down to 13 HP. Yeah, so you can double stab and kill one of them with, with his face, but it's, he's gonna be down to 10. There's three on board. And also, that sprint is not helping him. Yeah, second one already too. Oh, luckily for Ikop, there's no additional damage here for, for Masan in the hand, so he cannot keep up the pressure with something yeah. like a True Silver sort Champion, for example. Sort of unusual for, for Paladin to get the, the reach, because he doesn't have much reach. He relies on his board. Exactly, he does not really have uh, any burst. And uh, going here for Sylvanas, it's probably going to be Zap, but then you're fishing out that Zap, so yeah. you can play Tyrion later on if you want to. Yeah. Oh, there's on the a other hand, has an antique heal bot. That's pretty clutch. Yeah. You can heal bot Zap and... Quartermaster lives, but Azure goes face, it keeps up the tempo though. And Seems pretty nice to me. And if a second sap, sap comes out, I think the rogue's got this game. Yeah, he also got double Tinker Shop Sword oil lining up, uh, With lining up in his hand. Yeah. With the South Sea deckhand. He has he no flurry to. or prep though, so he needs to draw he two or three draw cards prep first and then flurry. Yeah, he needs to draw two or three cards as winning conditions right now. But uh, he's on the right track though. But there's no other option here than to anti kill bot. Yeah, I believe so. It's. Well. Well, if you're sapping anyway, you know the... You could also go for Loth up here, because as you already pointed out, there's not much yeah, reach for, for the Paladin. And if you go Loth up... If you did leave the Quartermaster alive versus your 7, though, you could be liable to lose versus True Silver Consecrate, because the No, you can't. If you play Loth up, you can't lose to that. If you play Loth up, exactly. But I would do that so in that's order correct, to yeah. put up more pressure. I'm just saying, there's, for example, there's Violet Teacher in his end, there's Force here as well. Force here enables the... Hero power with Sap. There's like three or four options you can take. I guess Lothar is pretty good. Yeah, I really like that. Putting Stops out some more yeah. pressure. He's not dying this turn. Uh, other than we see maybe a crazy knife juggler with yeah. something. And back well. on the mind games theme, like if the Paladin sees the rogue at seven, he wants to overcommit so he can yes. finish the game. Exactly. But if he saw him at 15, it would play much more defensive. Mm. So that's the thing for Masan now. He he should yeah. not overextend. He exactly. should not be greedy. He should just stick. I got no lethal. I should not try yeah. by any means to get into the he lethal range. He needs to forget lethal right now. Yeah. Just play it out safe because then you, you get the best chances. He has the lay on hands to heal up. He has a Tyrion Fortring. One Zap is yeah, already he can out. Stabilize pretty quickly. Yeah. So for now, uh, I totally agree with that. He goes for the Eldor Peacekeeper, takes damage off the board. Oh, he didn't hit the to the face. Again. Wow. Yeah, that's four. That's a flurry. That is the flurry. You can Tinker's flurry for five. But then he drives the True Silver. That's so risky. There's no preparations. Hmm. Let's see. It's very risky though. Flurry's worth two anyway, with the Azure Drake on board. So you can face tank into Peacekeeper and heal back to nine. And kill the Quartermaster with your Azure Drake. And that way... You could, no, also, the run, you could also face tank the Quartermaster. Hmm. No, then that doesn't kill the, it. The biggest problem here is that he needs the Dagger and Flurry, and that's four. Yeah. That doesn't leave room for heal, but... Unfortunately. So he needs to find another decent way to clear and stay alive, I think. Actually, I would. you have to go lucky here. I would say you can't play around the here? True Silver here. You would say? Yeah, because if you heal up with it the It feels like the winning play, that's correct, but... Uh, but what else? There's so you many can, cards You now. can use the Earthling Farce here as well, in some combination, maybe with the South Sea Deckhand and... Well, he goes for the Tinker Shop, so... Yeah, he's not playing looks. around it. Yeah, wow. But we haven't seen not one True Silver, have we? No, so we haven't seen likely. a true in the game. Six wow, cards in he feels court. very lucky. But he brings the ro uh, the Paladin down as well, so Masan is also on the on the ropes here. Oh, does he get it? Nope. Nope. Leon has not enough because he's not going to have enough mana, so... I would go for Tyrion here. Yeah, Tyrion looks like the, the only defensive play. What about Belcher, Minibot, develops a bigger board? Not really. You don't Hold really want the... 
gets taken out. He thinks he wants the weapon, but he really doesn't want a weapon. Because once he gets the weapon, the rogue's going up to 12, and he's not going to be face tanking at all. Yeah. So I'm not sure if Belcher... Belcher still does a good job at stopping Azure Drake. But if maybe the... No. And it le lets you get two token minions, like Minibot and Belcher, for the equality. And if you can't, you can also get a 1-1 a one -one token. Yeah. So that builds up your board for equality, rather than relying on top deck and Consecrate to clear. Totally, but he goes for the Tyrion Forging. We just see another Violet Teacher being drawn here for Ecop. But now... And on that line of play as well, if you kept a coin, you could then equality coin Leonhand's next turn, clear the board, draw three cards, heal for it. Equality coin, lay on hands, what? <laughs> <laughs> this turn, he could have gone for Belcher, Minibot, yeah. and okay. rely on the board being stopped, and he, he keeps the Minibot and a 1 and 2 is. Yeah. And the turn after, he uses Equality, trades both of his small minions mm -hmm. to clear the board, and then he can yeah. heal for 8. Okay, yeah, yeah, that. sure. I think that might be the, the best oh. line of play, probably. But I guess he fancies Tyrion Fordring here because you're trading so well with that, with that shield, mm -hmm. and if... Something like a Tinker Sharp Sword Oil hits on the lower He's tempted to Salt Sea, but it only goes to 5 with the Tinkers. He would need to get the bonus on the Azure Drake, that's like 33%. Yeah. It's Can you trigger that first with something else? And if he goes for that, he risks losing again to, to the weapon top deck. So but yeah, also the heal that. bot. There you go. And he goes for full heal up. He does not even die to True Silver Consecration if it was available, but as we yeah. know, it's not available here. I like that, honestly. Yeah, it's very nice. Talon can't win, and the Turian does not have his bubble anymore, so... Just waiting, and that's also a nice turn here for Masa until you use the lay on, he uh, lay on hands. Yeah, I'll summon anybody if he wants to. Mm. What do you trade into? Azure, I guess. Yeah, the take, the, take the spell damage off the Definitely. board. That leaves Tyrion to die to South Sea, though. Uh, could he get lethal with a flurry, maybe? Ooh, there's a flurry. Wow! Can there's a flurry, it? so that's a three, that's seven here. He would need to South Sea and trade it first, and then Tinkers. No, it's lethal. Is it? Yeah, it's lethal. You go Weapon, then South Sea. Is that enough mana, though? You have two, two three, four, seven, five, nine. nine. Yeah. yeah, it's lethal. Yep. You go South Sea, attack into the yeah, Tyrion, exactly. and then, then tinkers. tinkers, go to the face, and you yeah. deal enough damage. Nine, 13, 17 damage. Yeah. It's a pretty good game, actually. Yeah, he very was, good game. He was very a very rough risk. spot, and he caught up with the right players. Playing defensively. He has a very aggressive lineup, though. With the Rogue and with the Face Hunter. And yeah. And yeah. I've seen this lineup a lot, though. Uh, Rogue, Freeze, and Face Hunter. A lot of people play it on uh, open qualifiers. Yeah, Oscar got me with that. It's it's a yeah. solid lineup. That's what he used for, to qualify for Seed Star here. Yeah, I know that. Thank you for <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for rubbing it, man. Yeah, oh, man. <laughs> Sold in the boom. <laughs> anyway, uh, Ecop comes back, gains some momentum here, so it's not a 2-0 anymore, it's a 2-1 now, and maybe he can go for the reverse kill? Yeah, he could come back. So what classes does he cop have? Uh, he still has the Hunter and the and Druid the left. Druid. Which is this Paladin? Which is the Paladin. Yeah. And he gets I better draws with Face Hunter, I think he should win that matchup, and uh, it all comes down to the Druid. I really like playing the, the Paladin versus well, Druid. Well, it, it, it depends on if he plays maybe two anti kill bots, if... If Masson plays two anti kill bots, you can also in easily Paladin. win against. It's not very common. Oh, uh, at all. No. I have I have seen it a couple, a couple of times being played in tournaments recently, because it's just so much heal. There also was the crazy version. Uh, I'm with lay on hands as well. Two heal bots, one lay on Two heal bots, one lay on hands. I think so two lay on hands might be better. Depends. It comes too late against face hunters. So if you're preparing I against face hunter, that, yeah. then the anti kill bot is way better. But anyway, we see Masson here lining up. Wow, he draws into the Dr. Boom turn one. So that's not really the hand you want to have against the Face Hunter. You want those shielded mini bonds. You want your uh, your early aggression yeah. with the Knife Juggler. You want Zombie Chai if you run. You want mi mini bot. You want monsters. You got none of that right now. Yeah, and he also runs the big game hunter. So maybe no com mind control uh -huh. tech. That also, well, m sometimes people prefer mind control yeah. tech over big game hunter. Gladly there's no Glaive Zooka though, which would have killed the token. So Absolutely. Leopard goes down. There's the Consecrate for later. That's a pretty heavy hand, man. And now I feel uh, like you have to go for Eldor Peacekeeper, develop some yeah. board position here. I like that turn. Um, wow, <laughs> perfect Eagle Horn bow. I don't think he trades that. He might trade a Scientist into it. Yeah, I feel like the Scientist trade is pretty decent or here. Or you can just ignore it because you get one extra damage anyway. What's the Paladin going to do about it? Yeah, turn four, probably a Shredder. You want to cheese every single point of damage you can in Space Yeah. Hunter. 
Yeah, I would also agree to go to the face here. Yeah. But still, it's a very nice turn three play here. You do not really want to play the Arcane Golem so early. Yeah. Lately, I've realized that 99% of the time, the correct move is to go face his face hunter. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, the biggest exceptions are Armor Smith on turn two. For that, you want to trade, but otherwise, you. Like. Clerics, just don't let yeah. them go face. Acolytes, go face. <laughs> Actually, it sounds funnier than it is because when you're into pro play, it, yeah. it comes down to face hunter trading or not trading and yeah. going face hunter. There's so many games that are decided yeah. by the player deciding to trade. Wow, and Masan even uses his consecration here to to take out that mad scientist and mm. to keep his elder peacekeeper. That. And the peacekeeper doesn't die the way at the least. There's no Harrison inside though. I think he might run it, hence. He's banking on maybe a top tag if he gets lucky. Do you now think he will use the coin and the quick shot to trade that elder peacekeeper away when he plays? I don't the think quick shot comes out. I think he just hero powers. Coin does come out so you can feel the the five mana. Okay, so more face pressure here. Yeah. Yeah. And also you're forcing feels nice. him to trade. Why? Why waste three damage? You don't care if Falcon Golem dies. You don't. You never expect your minions to survive unless they're creepers or so. Especially by turn five. Yeah, totally. We have seen one Consecration played, though. Yeah. It's pretty rough that he doesn't have another one to answer whatever. He's got Belcher, but still, there's an Owl. Yeah, I like this. Even though there's six mana for the Paladin now, he doesn't well, want what to does pop the Paladin Thorson. do on six mana? Emperor hey, he gets closer maybe to eight. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he gets early You want an Arcane Golem hands. when he's going into eight, so you give him nine. It doesn't matter if he has nine, right? Yeah, exactly. So that's the ideal play to do it. That's ideal, but with this hand, I totally agree to the play. He's putting on so much pressure now. The Paladin down to 13 HP Why already. Why did he give up the bow, though? Does he expect to draw maybe a weapon if he runs four weapons? I think that's reasonable, but if he runs three weapons... It's also... If he expects to win He was extra. also maybe uh, afraid of Harrison Jones coming down. It was turn five. Yeah, that makes sense as well. That's why... Six. Yeah, because of the Consecrate play. That yeah, kind of warns there might be a Harrison. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I think that's what Ecop thinks that's about. That's very good, actually. I like it. Belcher comes down. We see the Owl and the Kill Command. Wow. And there's two Owls, even. Two Owls now being drawn. Does owl, he play? The question is, does he play the Golden Owl or the Noble <laughs> Owl? <laughs> I got one each as well, man. I got that problem all the time. <laughs> and there you go. Command. Kill Command to the face, probably. What do you think about this? Do you think it's premature? Or do, would you hero power or what? I would I play the Normal Owl. <laughs> no, that's I'm a big difference, joking. yeah. No, uh, I would also agree to that because uh, you might need every mana possible in the upcoming turns and yeah, you, that's true. you're totally now at the point where you're running out of hand cards and you go for the damage anyway. He's not fitting six mana though next turn, unless he gets a second command. And what I think though, he's trying to get rid of his end as much as possible because of quick shot, so he yeah. can benefit from it. And now let's calculate. We do have three, five. Okay, so he's. Oh, that's pretty well, unlucky for son. Do you no, want that's, that's lethal. Okay, but that was pretty unlucky because he banked on the blue bots, getting yeah. explosive trapped and killing the owl, but the owl survived. And here we see unleash and probably the quick shot. Well, or the hero ability. It does not uh. matter. And now that's the spot I was talking about. Ecop took his chances and brought it down to a two-two. And maybe Masan. Well, we know Masan, so he's not very a nervous guy, mm -hmm. but. Maybe in the head, maybe even though he seems cool, he might now be like, okay, it's Yeah, two like you two. said, it's 2-2 two two now, yeah. Yeah, and maybe he makes a mistake now, so I really, wow, the players were joining If you had too. Freeze Mage left, though, I would say you would probably win the series, because... Now it's Druid against so Paladin, that's yeah, also so very winnable for, for both players. I have to rejoin quickly, because the players just uh, lined up again, uh -huh. and in the queue we have the spectator bug, everybody knows about it. <laughs> so why am I explaining it? Because I'm stupid! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, funny times in Seed Story. Yeah, I just <laughs> love being here. So apparently Ecop net deck the team 100% win deck. What do you think about that, Kappa? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> anyway, uh, a very nice hand here for... Uh, I would say that's a perfect hand. Is that post mulligan? Oh, we see the... That's the post mulligan, yeah. Got the growth. Okay, there's the growth on the rear side. But Masan... There's a juggler and true silver and shredder. That's juggler, so true. That's, that's just perfect. She gets perfect mini bot. This is oh. also peacekeeper, obviously. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> He's won the tempo game. Period. Yes. Unless there's a crazy swipe or value. We, we also have Sylvanas that could be a game changer in later stages of the of the game. Yeah, I think he could have gone for coin mini bot, probably. Coin mini bot? I, I want to keep that for Palo and shredder. You can play... No, because you, coin mini bot into juggler, into peacekeeper, their shredder. 
Coin mini bot into juggler into peacekeep. No, I don't like well, that. Why not? That's the because best beatdown play. I, I like to play because you have to play. We didn't have the shredder, okay, but I would have liked it in that case. That's what I'm saying. The thing that's disturbing for you as a paladin is the druid of the claw turn five. As a taunt? Yeah, the four six druid. Of, there you go. The true silver does not trade with it if you can't get but it if out. If he coined it, couldn't. No, you would have been able to. If you even if he coins. Yeah, but. You don't. You also don't want to pl play the elder peacekeeper on a black. You don't. You don't want to play it on a zombie chow. So nah, going if for it was that. a shredder, it was fine, I guess. In the plan. I yeah, I, I'd like. Because you got like to. You got to. You got to think turns ahead, and sometimes you got to expect some cards. Yeah, that's exactly why I was uh, thinking of the druid of the claw turn five. Yeah, of course. You're coming. also correct. Yeah, it's yeah. a pretty big wall four six. Yeah, you were putting under pressure. I was playing safe. That's yeah, the yeah, difference yeah. here in. Sometimes you gotta play beat down as well. By the you. way, do you like Paladin? Do you play Paladin a lot yourself? Um, I brought Paladin with me. Okay. And because last did I get to play? Yeah, I got to play versus Taj. I won me a game versus Druid. Okay. And I think it's pretty damn good for the purpose you wanted no to yeah. fulfill. Anyway, now we talked about it earlier. Sylvanas coming down, maybe stopping the Paladin here with his uh, very nice hand. And uh, mm, anyway, he just why goes. would he want to ping it? No. Oh, please don't hit a knife juggle. No. Oh, he's lucky. It, it shouldn't, like a punishment way. Because yeah, but why would he want to ping? Do not forget uh, forget about the major goal. The major goal is here to punish Eco for bringing face hunter. <laughs> 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 well, still though, you could have even if you want the juggler out, you could have juggler after, not to risk it. Yeah. Yeah. Masan, <laughs> listen to ignite. <laughs> <laughs> Azure comes down. There's no innervate swipe, no nothing. Yeah, so we just see Shapeshift and Sylvanas trades away yeah. that Knife Juggler preventing potential muster for battle coming yeah. in. Even though the Druid is still at 20 and Paladin doesn't have re reach as we talked about, yeah. there's still a lot of pressure from But there's the muster for battle. And that's pretty good versus Sylvanas. Uh, you could Whoa. play that first if you wanted to, but he wants to go for Emperor Thoris in this turn. Just gave him a 2-2. What, what else could he do? Okay. Well, Besides Thorson? He could have given him, a one, like, setting up the chances for, for yeah. Sylvanas to take a 1-1, one, one, but it six. doesn't really matter. 2-2, two, two, one, one. Uh, Thorson is the better play here. Yeah, but then you could ping the 1-1 one, one as well, so you keep the board all the time. And you don't... Okay, but you only... You but only keep a scientist versus a swipe turn. So yeah, I guess yeah. this is better. And even if there's a swipe, he forces a swipe here, because Thorson has to die. Exactly, exactly, so and then you're good, setting actually. up a nice turn yeah. master for battle. It's turn seven if you, you top deck another quarter master, maybe. Yeah, you can exactly turn seven and quarter with master. Yeah. That's pretty big. So I also agree to Emperor Thorison here. And what are we probably going to see here by Ecop? Um, he's got eight mana. Uh, he's he's got a three and a five drop. You so. could use the force of nature though for the board clear. You could use your hero ability, force of nature, to clear it all away. Feels like a, a losing play low. It feels like it's way too defensive because you can't play a single minion on top of it. But uh, if you go for the eight mana, Phil, you can play uh, either Belcher, Druid Claw, or the Shade. I feel like you have to trade that Emperor Thoris in a way this turn. So uh, going for Druid of the Claw. It does always feel like that, especially versus any mid range or control type deck. But, oh, but for me, that's it. that's even more expensive because it also leaves you with nothing on the board, but you lose your Druid of the Claw. Well, you have a combo part in hand, but I would value the Druid of the Claw higher here than the than combo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe that's just me, but I do. Perhaps. Oh. Wow, <laughs> Masan, are you kidding me? There's a PGH, but let's take it easy. Yeah, but still, come yeah. on. He can actually Shredder, he can ping first, then Shredder, BGH, if he wants to fit it like that. Yeah, that's a very nice turn, I also like it. But still, turn seven, <laughs> Masan, are you kidding me? It's, I was talking about poker earlier, it's the same with him at poker. <laughs> He's just always winning everybody. on the river. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And there we go, he just uses his shapeshift first, takes out one bomb, then goes for the big game hunter, clearing that the Dr. Boom, and then swings in with the pilot of the shredder. Well, does not swing in, he plays it on the board, but goes down to 13 HP. And there's, there's a quartermaster. Quarter, yeah. You can't quarter consecrate. You can consecrate with monster and ping the shredder. But what you can do is go for Master for Battle, attack into the big game hunter, attack with the bomb hope that yeah, you hit yeah, for yeah. three on the pile of the shredder, and you have a very nice board position here. And you don't lose the combo, that's only 20 right now. Wow, <laughs> I was nearly calling <laughs> it. Another scientist, dude. 
one of the games I played, there was two Shredders in the same game. In hey. both of them, in a row, they got the ship's cannon card. Have you seen Alish yesterday? He got a bunch of Doomsayers, back right? Back-to-back Doomsayers? Yeah, see? It's that fucking a crazy RNG on the yeah. Shredder card. And so Ecop is uh, liking his mad scientist out of the Shredders. Yeah. He's oh, no. Shredder. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you do? Now you could go for double taunt, even though that makes you, like, if there comes a quality consecration, you're pretty much screwed. Definitely, but uh, I think yeah. you can play around that, <laughs> since you rely on board and we to have, win the game. And we have seen Masam doing some crazy draws last turn, so I expect him just to draw easy into the equality here. So <laughs> GG easy. Easy easy? Easy easy. <laughs> I think he goes for a double taunt. I yeah, fine. you have to go for a double taunt here. Maybe right? even kill one though. The science mm. is pretty useless. <laughs> oh, it man. doesn't feel right to me though. Just keep that two two. It doesn't matter. There we go. Double taunt. Swing to the face, and there we go. Maybe is it? No. Oh, monster. <laughs> <laughs> Embarrassing. Imagine another quartermaster though. That would have been pretty. Yeah, sick as well. second quartermaster. You're right. You could. True Silver Consequence also very good. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. It's pretty spot on. He hits for six in a pace if he wants to. Yeah, why shouldn't he? I would keep up the pressure. Hit for for six into the face. Oh, yeah. Scientist also dies. Yeah, there's nothing in Yeah, there's yeah never, I thought Scientist survived. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we were just looking for those taunts because they are the most important thing. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. yeah, everything is dead now and. Oh, swipe? Doesn't even mm. change a lot here. Well, you can force can swipe, maybe. Swipe? Is that enough to clear? Force swipe. Yeah, that's enough to clear with yeah, force swipe. It is. But, yeah. That's the way to survive here. You can all. No, you Could can't. you go for Keeper of the Grove? Take out. No, Keeper swipe is not enough. Silence here, no. That's he needs to force. Yeah. It's pretty rough. And that's a way defensive play. And even the Paladin's gonna be a 19, still not even a combo wins, and there's not gonna be any point. Exactly. If, if we imagine now he used the force earlier, when I suggested using the force. Mm. Uh, Which turn was it? Thorison, yes. You would have a Druid of Claw left. Druid of the Claw left. Instead of that force of nature. Doesn't mm. really help. No, I, I can't really make a recap because so much happened. Yeah, that's true, but you that. would have a Druid of Claw instead of that force of nature, pretty much, but I don't think that's No, worth because it. I think you played it anyway last turn, so. But he, he would have he denied the Thorison for... Hmm. Oh yeah, he had two Druid yeah. of the Claw, so you would have... So he would yeah. have an extra one right now. Sure, but... Which wouldn't help him as... But having a Druid of the Claw left here would be pretty... I would love to have Druid of the Claw left, to be honest. But then what What do you do against the board? You can just swipe yeah, not and much. not really take take much out. Okay, I I guess it didn't matter. And Ecop says, "My thanks to you, Masan." He maybe is congratulating him, but he's doing that a bit too early because <laughs> Masan does not have lethal. Damage lethal man. He goes for wow. Uh, there's the consecration. Unfortunately, he can't play it this turn. But I guess you swing to the face, go for master for battle next turn. You have the iron big out silencing. The consecrate as well. So there's not not much else to be done. I mean, Ancient of Lore hero power keeps you alive for another turn, but... <laughs> yeah, we see a swipe, so... Uh, you <laughs> right now for Ecop, it looks like yeah. he stays alive, but as we know, there's the second Consecration in this game. Yeah. And yeah, he's trying his best. Uh, I'm just taking a look at his face, he doesn't look yeah. He looks happy. back at us to see if there was a reaction, but yeah. <laughs> unfortunately this is a reaction. Consecration being played, Massa closes the series out and he wins over Ecop in a very nice 3 1 series here. Yeah. Yeah. 3 totally. 1, 3 2. Three I'm two. cool, Ignite from Portugal. <laughs> 3 1. It was 3 1, I guess. 3 2, dude. 3 2? We were talking about, yeah, 2 2. Oh, yeah, 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 2 2, okay. Pretty close game, actually. Yeah. Definitely. So, 2 0, 2 2 into 3 2. So, so the mic game I was talking about didn't actually matter. So, because Massa just stood, uh, uh, kept cool and. Yeah, he did, and played it yeah. really well in the last game. <laughs> yeah. So he got the 1-0 lead in his group, and who does he play next, do you know? What's his uh, group? Yeah, Maverick, who won against Maverick, Life Coach. Okay, so uh, next up, we are going to take a short break, yeah. and then we are back with the game Maverick against Masan. So stay tuned.